Jumpsford. Here we are for our, uh, our choice of uh, the Benson and Hedges semi-finals. We think it certainly ought to be a good one. And uh, the weather here is uh, not too bad. The sun is threatening to come through. It's heavy overcast. I think the uh, ball might wobble about a bit. And there's a danger of uh, stars this afternoon, so we're informed. Players are on their way, and I can tell you who won the toss here. Uh, Mike Chatting won it for Middlesex, and he's invited Essex two back first, and I can tell you that Leicestershire have won the, uh, won the toss against Kent and uh, put Kent into bat at the other venue. Now, with me is Jack Bannister. Welcome back, Jack. Morning, Peter. I gather that in spite of staunch service 20 years for Warwickshire, you never played on this ground. No, I don't think it was headquarters as such in the 50s and 60s, and I played on seven others in, in uh, Essex around and about never here. No. Well, it's looking very good now, isn't it, yes, the centre of Essex cricket. Let's have a look at the two teams. Batsmen are on their way. Graham Gooch. And Brian Hardy. The news, uh, both teams look pretty strong there, Jack. And uh, Phil Edmonds, there was some doubt about him. He hurt his shoulder in the last match, but he's all right. He's fit to play, doesn't he? Yes, Middlesex have, have got their full, full ball attack there. And um, they're an interesting side because most of their bowlers, certainly the three quicker bowlers, they're, they're not really geared to containment. They're wicket takers. And uh, that's, that's the strength, really, of their side. They're all powerful attack because the batting is just a, a touch light at the top of specialist batting. But they're such a powerful pace attack. We're told that Wayne Daniel has been bowling quicker lately than almost at any time in his career. Well, I saw the, the, the previous game at Worcester, and although Worcester got off to a, a flying start, they were 170 with about 18 overs left. Daniel came back and he put the break on, and in the end, I thought, turned that particular innings. Right then, I think we're just about set to start. Grand looking at the picture. Grand has done a beautiful job on the outfield. I wish I could get my lawn like it, Jack. Anyway, in the commentary box is uh, Richie Banner. Quite often, allowing uh, the bowler the sight of all three stumps. He's made 540 runs in first-class matches this summer. And he plays strokes like that. Puts him around about Lake Stump. Let's flash away through the offside field. Gives a good indication of uh, how quick the outfield is after last night's rain. Well, I doubt if Gooch timed that uh, perfectly, but uh, it still beat the fielder quite comfortably. Well, it's not no balls, it's uh, the batsman who have taken full advantage of anything loose. Fine. Too fine for the man rushing around, Wayne Daniel. Radley is the fielder. They should get three there. To Hardy. Pad, and that was the giving room shot. He's well outside leg stump. A little ricochet back onto middle. So that's a bit of breathing space for Middlesex. Having put Essex in, they saw them gallop away to 34. And now the first wicket has gone down. Well, the last two deliveries there from Williams both came back a little bit and followed Brian Hardy and. Uh, He's always tend to step back to the lead side when he's playing, but it's a system that's worked very well for him. But on this occasion, it didn't. You can see that it followed him quite a long way back, and 
really I suppose that he should have been going the other way and playing that ball to the leg side but uh, it's a way that Brian Hardy has always played and it's been successful for him Nearly I've seen him take some marvellous catches in the last well the last few months it is caught one down in Melbourne and then another one another two in the limited overs games and that was almost a great catch yeah I don't really think you could put this as a catch I'm not quite sure it carried but uh, in any case it was a marvellous stop which is on 60 two more there and they'll uh, win the race this time Should come back for three Bad delivery to start with, wide outside the lake sump. Little uh, gift there to Pritchard. Just to that right at the bottom of the bat. gone down uh, with quite a clatter it's as though he uh, there's a little bit of pain there difficult to tell but uh, it hit the deck very quickly I think it's in the inside of the knee uh, bottom of the thigh somewhere up there yeah short delivery here he opened himself up and you could see the ball there uh, caught him inside the left knee Neatly placed. Barlow had been back there for Gooch. Would have saved uh, two or three runs if he'd remained there. Mark Eddie has gone to towards round about second slip, leaving a big gap between himself and Downton. Unfortunately, he didn't hit it uh, any higher because that's precisely where we are. That came at a fearful bat. Yes, the umpire didn't want to be watching the bowler's front foot for too long there. That's matter got his head knocked off, but uh, that was a typical Gooch special. He's been hanging back a little bit because the ball's not come onto the bat this morning, but. Uh, he didn't worry whether it came on or not, then he just went through with the shot, hit it about four or five feet high and with tremendous power. Gone. Beautifully caught by Embury. Away to his right. Gathered that in very well. It was miscued by the batsman. But Embury anticipated beautifully. He must have picked it up the moment it left the bat. Yeah, well, Cowan's banging this in. He'd been born a very good line and length, and he suddenly banged this one in. It didn't bounce too high as it won't on this wicket. The batsman got onto the pull shot, hit it reasonably well, but uh, Embry taking a good shot, uh, good catch at mid wicket. And Cowan's has deserved that. He's bowled well this morning. He's run up well. He's bowled a good line, good length, and uh, he's easily looked the most impressive of the Middlesex seam bowlers. Feeling, but it was also brilliant running between the wickets there was only just one there but Gooch was off and he ran beautifully yeah, the important part here was Ken McEwen answer Gooch's call there was no hesitation they both ran and if they hadn't have done there'd certainly have been a wicket down but you can see quite clearly there Gooch just beating the throw but a brilliant throw by Embry in the one stump that he could see that's four it's a glorious trick to ring about Graham Gooch's bat for these last two drives he's played the straight one and that both of them played with tremendous power and beautiful shots a 
Gooch missed out up at uh, Headingley. Kewen goes and Gooch shakes his head at the non-striker's end. That uh, looked from here as that might just have been an inside edge. Didn't seem to deviate a great deal. No, in fact, he probably, if anything, kept a little bit low, but uh, a bit unlucky, I suppose, really, as a batsman, if you're playing hard off the back foot and you get an inside edge and it carries through to the keeper. And uh, a very vital wicket for Middlesex because Kenny McEwen's a very fine player indeed and scores very quickly, but... A little bit unlucky there. It might have been almost a bottom edge nearly there. Yeah, that was really unusual. You'd think the ball would uh, just zero straight down into the ground. Instead of which it's gone all the way through. It must have been the faintest of edges, and yet there was an enormous appeal from everyone out there. That I don't think Embry's all that pleased. Maybe applauding the little bit of steeple chasing down there. I don't think he's too pleased that uh, Edmonds crept in and was beaten by that leg glance from Gooch. He whipped around and pointed to Gatting as soon as the stroke was played. 108 for three, 31 overs gone. The middle six have fought back very well. Gooch is on 48. Pringle taking strike is on two. Was taking strike. I uh, wouldn't mark that down as one of uh, the best shots we've seen today. It was meant to be just a gentle little nudge down to third man for a single, but I had the feeling the ball started off roundabout off stump and uh, may even have come in a little bit towards Pringle's pads. Yeah, well, a pretty poor shot this because the ball was always going to hit the wicket if uh, it didn't turn and Really, if you're a six foot six, you're a big strong lad, you're far better hitting the ball straight down the ground than trying to chop it there from a good length. And he'll be disappointed with that shot, but uh, Middlesex will be absolutely over the moon with that. It's put them back in a very good position after Essex had got off to a tremendous start. I'll be able to tell uh, exactly where it pitched, but I've got a feeling he could have played forward and almost hit it on the half volley as well. Indeed. Why on earth he was playing back to that? I have uh, no idea. It uh, was sort of half a step forward and hit it on the full, if you like. 108 for four. And uh, problems now for the Essex skipper, Keith Fletcher. 50 to Gooch. We're past the halfway mark. So if you look at 50 runs in 32 overs, it uh, is not all that quick, but he's still there. Still has the chance after lunch to push it along and finish up with something like 120 or 130. For lunch, I think he might have to be satisfied with 33 overs at the interval. Radley, the man in, very close on the offside. Over and lunch. That was a fascinating session. Middlesex winning the toss and putting Essex into bat. And at one stage, Essex were just racing away. Daniel and Williams bowled no balls, their line was wrong. And then all of a sudden, Hardy was out. And when Cowens came on with Edmonds, things were quietened down and wickets were taken. 114 for four of 33 overs at lunch. The batsman out, Hardy for 14, Pritchard for 31, McEwen for 3, and Pringle for 2. Gooch is 50, and Fletcher 4.
Wicket takers Williams 1 for 21, Cowan's 2 for 28 and Edmonds 1 for 25. A very good spell of bowling from Phil Edmonds. It's nudged away very fine. Ambry should just uh, pull that up. It's a very short boundary down there. It's good running by Fletcher to make two out of it. The next batsman due in. Turn it east, Foster and leave it to come. As, uh, Daniel warms to his task again. It's edged over the top of slips, four runs. Little, uh, something a little bit taller at slip there might have had a chance. Well, this was an exact repeat almost of the uh, no ball that uh, Daniel got Fletcher caught behind. But uh, on that occasion, the ball didn't follow him back and he got a nice solid top edge well over the top of slip. It's a chase for uh, Clive Radley. He's going to leave it for Embury. It's a wise decision. Oh, well done. Skillful piece of bowling there by Embury. Gooch goes. Just turn the shade, that I think. Hold it a little bit slower. A little uh, bit too far out for Graham Gooch to attempt that shot. So, uh, full credit to the bowler there. Gooch goes for 58. Yeah, good bowling here by John Embury. He's forced the batsman to try to make too much room and still bowled a very full length, which really didn't give Graham Gooch time to get back into it once he'd made all that room. But uh, he's bowled pretty, pretty impressively here. Keith Fletcher, always a very good player of spin bowling. He moves around a bit and figures and just scores runs at both sides of the wicket. And it's a very interesting contest, this. Bouncer. It's in, uh, very many of those. Dug in really short here by Williams. Um, just about head high, otherwise that would have been a one day wide. And Brutal Fletcher. <laughs> a big confident shout and that looked out. Perfectly uh, straight. Round a long half volley, I would have thought. And Keith Fletcher looking to run it away for a single. I think we'll see this is a very full length delivery with Fletcher looking to work it on the onside. This stage of the Essex innings, he's got to try something. And again, the accuracy of class slow bowlers in one day cricket is being shown to be more than useful. Off the medium paces, batsmen can nidge and nudge singles but that's got to be put to ball against the slow bowlers and once they get it in the right slot as Embury and Edmonds have done then the opposition have got quite a task on their hands a pleasant uh, drive the returns that might have been four yesterday I hope you certainly slowed down with it a heavy rain what you do in the field in implored it from his teammates. 161 for six, Embury to bowl to Turner. Beaten Radley. Cowans is coming around, but no chance of cutting it off. And this LBW, Alan Lilly. And that looked to me as that might have been the one that comes back a little bit with the arm. Might have pitched around about, um, or been aimed around about leg stump and been going to hit middle and leg. And it's part of an excellent bowling performance by Embury. Very well up. He's got him back leg, I would suspect. Because of that angle that we've spoken about. Yeah. Very full length. Batsman forced to try and play across him. Just gives him no room at all, straight or offside. So, Lily out for 11. And despite taking three wickets this morning, Middlesex, uh, they're going to get the best part of 18 overs in the first hour. It just again reinforces what's been said about those 11 no balls yesterday. But for those, without any hurrying and scurrying, they would have got their, their overs through. There should be no problem at all in a cricket team in a limited overs match getting through 
the number of overs required by the TCCB. They make it difficult for themselves by bowling no balls and then by leisurely changes between overs and having men out in the boundary who are to bowl the next over who forget uh, that uh, there is to be a change then all those things add up to a little bit of a problem it's 166 for 7 now Middlesex have done it well this morning 49.3 overs David East is the new batsman Stuart Turner the non-striker Very safe hands. Roland Butcher out at deep mid-wicket. Stuart Turner goes. And uh, with only 49 overs gone, we're into the 50th now, we might uh, suddenly find ourselves in a situation where Essex are going to waste overs. Again, we see the value of Embry's line forcing players to play across and straight down the field is throat out a deep wide long on hardly had to move at all nicely positioned well taken I think that for a bowler to do as Embury's done to bowl to only three fielders on the offside mo most off spinners would have to go around the wicket to make that sort of field work but Again, Embury bowling wicket to wicket with that very close delivery stride. There, there goes the hit across. Good hit, well struck, but to the longest part of the ground. And there we are, nicely judged, taken according to the coaching manual. That's 167 for eight today. 17 overs have been bowled, 52 runs scored, and four wickets taken. So it's a very good performance. Butcher is the fielder. It's a good hit. Not easy to hit a the ball that's attempted as a Yorker. Finishes up as a low full toss. David East gave it a real clobbering straight down the ground. delivery not so well bowled for the full toss that went down the ground it's 178 for eight now 53 overs gone and we're just fractionally short of uh, the 10 past 12 mark only by a few seconds Williams <laughs> well he's not going to be feeling too good about that John Embury nor is Neil Williams nor is Mike Gatting four runs to Neil Foster and uh, they're changing places Williams is coming into cover and Barlow going out to long off. Getting. I have a feeling with uh, that number of overs, Jack, 
and the clock that uh, the umpires may have decided that as everyone's in position for the 54th that it would be one over I think Middlesex might get away with it because of the tremendous amount of time Foster took to come out on the field between the fall of wickets I've uh, just a little feeling in the back of my mind that uh, there might be no penalty Good shot for four over New Williams' head at cover. coming up and they're going to look for two and they're going to get it that's well placed 12 from that last over from John Embry but still the splendid bowling figures 11 overs two maidens 4 for 36 well, Neil Foster there he's done well he's the the one batsman to get hold of John Embry and just spool those figures a little bit. And Foster's got some useful tail end runs to his credit. He's a uncomplicated sort of batsman who got a good eye and a good natural swing of the bat and uh, he soon rattled up 15 to take Essex's score to a, a more healthy one of approaching 200. Just one over left to go. Mike Getting having a word with Merv Kitchen, possibly about the overrate. Just going back to that for a moment. The um, certain things the umpires will take into account when they put in their report on the overrate. One will be that uh, Neil Foster took a long time to come out onto the field. Another will be that um, Neil Williams wasted almost two minutes at the end of an over when he was over on the boundary and forgot that he was to bowl from this commentary box end. Uh, all those things will be flitting around in the umpires' minds when they get off the field. They'll have made their notes at the moment. Now they're solely concerned with the last over, the 55th, which is bowled by Wayne Daniel. Two to David East. Two for eight. Well, it's one of those cases where the crowd can get you into all sorts of trouble. They're all shouting for the batsman to go for the second. Perhaps it was the uh, Middlesex supporters who were doing the shouting. That there was never two there. Daniel can consider himself unlucky there. He saw Foster give the shuffle away. He followed him. Foster got a bottom inside edge in safest place in the world. Just past leg stump down for four. And he's almost done it again. Play those deliberately 
He has gone past around about the turn of the century. A flick of the wrist, but it's gone out of fashion these days. Almost a carbon copy shot. Well, not quite at York then, sir. hitting 23. Not surprising because Neil Foster has a higher score in first class cricket of 63 against Lancashire and he played today with a lot of common sense and uh, a certain amount of power as well. Middlesex need 203 runs to win. 3.69 for over is the requirement. the Essex scorecard with Foster at the bottom there with East 30-35 for that last wicket in just four or five overs and they did very well indeed because John Embury in particular you can see the wickets he's picked out of the middle of the Essex innings there this morning uh, all good wickets he got rid of Gooch and then Fletcher Lillian Turner all forcing them to try and play on side when beautifully accurately controlled line made it almost impossible and uh, he really gave the grip of the game back to Gatting and, and all bowled well Daniel came back and bowled much better today Neil Williams no no ball problems on the edge there went uh, a fair old rate of knots down that fine leg boundary two seconds that took to get to the fence and in fact that uh, was a pretty good opening over by Foster. It was unfortunate that he's bowling it two left-handed batsmen. If he'd been bowling it right-handers, he certainly moved the ball out and on a good length. And it, it could probably have created a lot of problems for right-handers, but it's a different game for the old left-hander there. 55 overs today, 202. Eight men out. Push nicely through the offside. Oh, this could be trouble. He's got to be out. Well, Barlow slipped and attempting to get back. I think if they'd both gone, if Wolf looks like had gone as well, there would have been two runs. Well, that was very poor running because for two batsmen who were used to playing together, one day cricket, there was always an easy two there. I mean, the field had to run after it, and he had to pick it up and turn, and really there was no danger of any two if both batsmen had gone. But, uh, I mean, Barlow set off knowing there was two. Then he saw Slack was watching the ball and not moving, and, of course, he tried to stop, and what happened was that it was a bit wet just there, got his heels in and went on his backside, and I'm afraid very bad cricket there from Middlesex point of view. Beautiful stroke, straight through it to cover. 
And the slow outfielder won't stop that for going through. Good bit of cricket, in fact, going on there. That was a very useful ball again from Foster. Scamp at single, good pick up, an ex excellent throw. And the umpire also in a perfect position, which is credit to him. He got absolutely dead square on, he was poised waiting to give the decision, which was good cricket all round. Fired by Middlesex. They've already got through uh, 26 overs, so very nearly at the halfway mark. Just the two men out, Barlow run out for seven and Gatting out for 28. It's a full pitch, found the gap uh, wide of mid on. Such a chase in it, but has to give it up, so four good runs to uh, Will Slack. Moves on to 36. Long be remembered by the crowd here at Chelmsford today. Disposed of uh, Mike Gutting, the score was 63, in mate 28. Turn of the bowler, fairly lashed it in the offside. A really brilliant, superb catch there by Lily, flinging himself, taking it one handed. Pringle again. He's out this time. No question of appeals there, that one nicked back again. Good delivery from Pringle and they'll be glad to see the back of uh, Clive Rowley. He's held him up many times in the past, he's been having a very good season. So 87 for three, middle six. And Radley going for seven. Almost a repeat of the ball before, but this time just keeping a little lower and Clive Ladley not quite getting his legs there in time and a very good delivery indeed and that's really thrown this game open now because uh, Gatting and Radley gone are the main two scorers in one day cricket for Middlesex and it's really even Stevens now Slack on uh, 38 Short hooked away down to uh, deep square leg that's going to beat the fielder and uh, over the ropes for four Close score. <laughs> well, they justified him going for the run. It was going to Ken McHugh's wrong hand, his left hand. His under hand throw wasn't far away. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of feeling here. They say going by the wrong hand, Kenny McHugh in here. He managed to get it and throw underhand, and uh, the batsman, as you can see, not even trying to ground his bat. It was two or three yards out. Great shot. I think, uh, Roland Butcher's made up his mind that if he can get down the wicket, he's going to try and do it. I saw it in the previous over. <laughs> he's given him this time. And Roland Butcher, not all that happy. But uh, up went the finger. But, uh, just a tank leg stump. Fairly close decision for him. Well, he hasn't gone very far forward, Roland Butcher. He's played round his front leg, and Umpire Kitchen decided that would have hit, and uh, it's only a very marginal doubt Butcher could have hoped for, but uh, he was falling on the offside as he tried to work a fairly straight delivery, and that's an important wicket for a six pick also, though there's plenty of batting to come. Uh, Roland Butcher and Wolf Slack were the last of the Middlesex specialist batsmen, and... Um, Paul Downton to come and then John Emery and Phil Edmonds as I say plenty to come but uh, that really was an important wicket the wicket send turn of one he saved one run but that was a fearful thump against the fence Pringle, Radley and Butcher. Quick catch again. The fielding could win this match for Essex. This time it's Brian Hardy. A marvellous catch by Lily earlier and now Hardy has taken off and put Paul Downton off Turner. A duck to Downton and two wickets to Turner.
Well, there's Paul Downton, very frustrated and forced to try the slog. That rate was creeping up and up, and that was a magnificent catch by Brian Hardy. He was airborne at the time he took it to his left. And all credit to Fletcher for frustrating Middlesex as he's done and forcing Downton into trying that shot after he'd been at the wicket for about a quarter of an hour. You see him here going down and swinging hard and as he hoped high. There's Hardy at mid-wicket taking off completely airborne and holding on to a, a, a catch in every way as spectacular and as good as the one that Lily took earlier. Catches really do win matches and if those two don't then Essex will think there's no justice. As the spinners did a tremendous job. And I wondered how long he could wait. I don't think Ember is going to be too happy about that. They're still in with a chance while Slack stayed there. But Turner made an awful mess of his stumps and perhaps he's made a mess of the Middlesex chance as well. It's the Essex out cricket of the last 20 minutes that's earned that wicket. It's, it's frustrated Wolf Slack above all, and yet um, with circles and four players always needed in them, the one feels there wasn't need for that sort of heave yet. It had to come eventually probably, but singles ticking along at three or four and over. And then the slog in the last eight or nine overs. But fine innings, and he's held things together, as he's done so many times this season. Well, I very quickly read you the winning numbers of the Graham You'll see this very, very wild shot, foot coming down towards mid arm, all across it. Ordinary straight delivery. A one-day wicket to a one-day shot. And the wicket-taker, Stuart Turner. He's uh, bowling at the commentary box end. He's just reached his 100 wickets in Benson Hedges' matches over the years. Wendy Wimbush gives me the note that the other three to do that, John Lever, 122, John Shepherd 102, Robin Jackman, 101. Stuart Turner now 100. Just four men to reach 100 wickets in this competition. Is Turner to Edmonds. Tenth over of the inning, Stuart Turner. He now has three for 22. Yeah. 100 wickets in 70 matches. The bowling average, 19.56. It's been a splendid performer for Essex in all limited overs games. Thirty-two for six, and we're in the forty-fourth over. Embury to take strike. This is easily the best position that Essex have been in the whole match, even with that clattering start they got off to yesterday. But those three wickets they've taken for nineteen in the last eight overs have taken the middle out of the. Middlesex innings and put a lot of pressure now on these two, Phil Edmonds and John Embury, and the run rate now has crept up and up until it's nearly six, 5.92. Gooch is at Deep Eckwood Square.
Every dot ball now pushes that run rate up to a, a level where even a single off every ball isn't enough. And uh, sometime in the next over or two, we're going to see a, an attempt to break out by these two lower order batsmen. This is a splendid piece of out cricket from the Essex team, led by Fletcher. Eight overs, one maiden, no wicket for 21. They've bowled brilliantly and the fielding has been quite superb. Doesn't seem to be much fuss out on the field there. Fletcher seems to have them pretty well organised. I suppose that's... Uh, having kept on the side for so long. Four wickets remaining. Seventy needed from eleven overs. Four men must be inside that circle at uh, the moment of delivery, plus bowler and keeper. While Keith Fletcher's been marshalling his forces, he's kept them at a tidy over rate because we want another five or six minutes for two hours since lunch and they've already bowled 32 overs, so they're appreciably over the rate. It just shows what can be done with common sense and organisation. Pritchard, who's fielded well all day, coming in very smartly from cover. Trouble here if he hits the stumps. Oh, great throw by Hardy. He's already pulled off a marvellous catch. And now he's run out Edmonds with a direct hit. With David East rushing to the stumps. Hardy threw them down from the angle at mid-wicket. John Embury was never interested in a single here. Going to Hardy's right, 
clean pick up and a throw and even had it not hit direct it looked very tight but a marvellous piece of fielding and yet again another example of the wonderful out cricket that Essex have put on since lunch which has turned the game right round we have two cars causing obstruction in Hart Road Neil Williams, the new player, 134 for 7, he comes out to join Embury, who, has, who is on 6. Hardy again. safely away in the air, McEwen is the fielder, only just, not even then, that was uh, rather a, a loose attempt, the first uh, piece of lax fielding we've seen, McEwen going around to his left. Neil Foster comes back now, still keeping overs in hand for John Lever. Foster's bowled 8 for 29. They're going to hear through here and look for three. Pritchard the field of the fumble. Well, you wouldn't believe it. A great throw after the fumble and Neil Williams has run out. One hundred and forty on the board now, and surely Essex can't miss out now. Field by Ken McEwen. The last over as Norman Cowan comes out. 44 8. Eight runs to Embury.
Lily. performance put up here by this Essex team. Cowan's LBW to Foster without scoring. 203 the total needed for victory by Middlesex and they are 140 for nine. turn right round there square on facing down the wicket hit him back leg from the Essex supporters who sense that nothing can stop them now going on to Lords for the final. It's all over. Essex have won this Benson and Hedges semi final. A terrific performance. They batted well and their bowling and fielding has been outstanding. Foster at the end, 23, hit strongly, 202 for 8 from 55 overs. The Middlesex bowling, well, the bowlers did pretty well today, they were a bit loose yesterday, but today 
Embury 4 for 36, Edmonds 1 for 31, Cowns 2 for 35, Williams 1 for 39, and Daniel Bob much better today, even though his figures uh, look rather ordinary there, 56 from 11 overs. In reply, needing 203 to win from three uh, from 55 overs at 3.69 per over. Middlesex top score, Wolf Slack 60, Mike Gadding 28. Now Gadding was out to a super catch by Alan Lilly, and then Downton was out to another marvellous effort from Brian Hardy. There were two run outs down towards the end and one up the top, Barlow, 140 from 46 overs. Victory for Essex by 62 runs, and there's the last wicket. figures, leave a none for 21, bowled very well and so did, did Foster and Pringle, two wickets each to uh, the last two named. Then Stuart Turner, 11 overs, three maidens, three for 27 and Gooch, 11 overs, two maidens, none for 34. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nick Hill, the Deputy, Deputy Special Events Manager of Benson Hedges, will now congratulate Keith Fletcher of Essex. He will... He will now present a cheque for £4,250 to Mike Datting of Middlesex for losing captain. <laughs> the Benson the Hedges Gold Award winner, adjudicated by Mr Ray Ingworth, receives a copy of the Benson Hedges Cricket Yearbook a cheque for £275 and the Gold Award. The Gold Award winner is John Embry. Some remarkable Essex out cricket here. Uh, the last eight jack went down for 53 runs in 17 overs. Middlesex were 87 for two at one point. And going rather well and then it's right up Keith Fletcher's street isn't it really? Yes. It's a marvellous out cricket and tight bowling and two brilliant catches that deserve yes. to turn the match. I just wondered whether Raymond Illingworth, how, how, how seriously he thought of giving the gold award to Lily for that magnificent catch of well, catching when the Middlesex skipper was beginning to move. That's right, the, uh, Middlesex were moving along very smoothly indeed and looked as though they were well on the way towards what wasn't a, a great target. Um, and then that catch was plucked out of the air, and then the later one by Brian Hardy, ju just right. as brilliant a catch, and just as effective. Right. I'm not arguing about uh, the, the choice of John Embry, because he bowled beautifully, but Middlesex, in a way, went slightly bananas, I thought, Jack. There were three run-outs, and... Yes, I, I, again, that's all credit to, to Keith Fletcher and the way he marshaled his forces. He did it beautifully, didn't he? He frustrated them uh, more and more in the middle of the afternoon, until, in the end, somebody like Wolf Slack, who batted for... Uh, some 36, 37 overs was uh, being forced into trying the sort of shots that really he didn't want to play and the, the wild heave he played was, was really the beginning of the end for Middlesex. That's right. Yes, um, there, was, there was no panic stations when Will Slack got out. They, were, they weren't that much behind the required scoring rate. No, um, nowadays in this, with, with this, the fielding circles in which four people have, have, have got to stand, um, 
fielding captains find it terribly difficult to defend anything uh, ooh, 60 in the last 10 overs they find that, that it's almost impossible to defend and therefore Embury and Edmonds at that stage that was about the target and had they just been able to push a few singles and over and then go for the big slog in the last seven or eight overs but of course a couple of run outs of no run out is necessary but the one of Phil Edmonds at that stage was an unfortunate one uh, and then the golden rule in cricket you never run to a misfield which is exactly what uh, Neil Williams did. John Embury, who called him, may well have thought he was running to the danger end, but um, he was 22 yards wrong. Let's have another look at the Middlesex card then. Now, Cooch didn't get a wicket, but he played his part. 11 good, goodish overs. If you've got an opening batsman who can bowl exactly like that, then it gives your captain an enormous advantage. He can rotate his bowlers and he, he doesn't have to be so rigid in how he deploys them. And, and Graham Gooch, uh, I thought, played uh, just as an effective part with the ball as he did with the bat. So there we were. Who do you fancy for the final, Jack? Well, again, you've got two, two similar sides in a way. You, you, I, I thought, looking at this pitch yesterday, that the, the lesser pace of the Essex Seamers would probably be more suited to it. And, and a yeah. Lord's final pitch, it, it, usually the ball doesn't come onto the bat. Mm. So you've got two seam bowling sides of almost equal ability. Tell you what we'll do, um, just before we say farewell from Chelmsford, we'll have a look, Jack, at the wicket of Mike Gatty. Well, this was the one that turned the whole match. Stuart Turner's come in. It's wide. Gatting's given it a full foot and he's done it for to take off as he did and hold up. And he'd, he'd very nearly done it two or three overs before at the other end. It was an absolute magnificent match-turning effort. No now, that was terribly difficult for, for, for anybody to cover. I uh, thought we did well to get there. He went on. I mean, it all happened so far. Oh, it was a wonderful catch. And, mm. and that really did turn the match. Mm. So, the... The state of play then is that Leicestershire, uh, having tranced Kent yesterday, are through to their first one-day final since 1975. That was a Benson and Hedges. And Essex are through to their fourth Benson and Hedges final in seven seasons. So there it is from sunny Chelmsford. Some absorbing cricket today. Well played Essex, well played their captains, and tremendous out cricket. Now, Cable to Lily. Oh, and he's bowled him. 